All right, you can turn in your Bible to James chapter 3. This week's study is going to be on when to speak and when to be quiet. Right? Now, I had made a comment about this in last week's sermon on repentance. And I know I said about this older sermon that I had on the subject of when you should speak, when you should be quiet. And a couple of people were like, I looked for the sermon, I couldn't find it. So I actually checked it out and I thought, okay, yeah, I didn't actually upload that old sermon. It's actually, right here's the original notes from it. I preached it way back in July the 5th of 2009. So I'm actually going to redo this because it's a very interesting study. Going through Scripture, and we're going to be hitting a lot of references today. It's going to be a real big, good Bible study here. And it's very interesting some of the things that the Bible says about over-speaking. See, you know, always keep in mind the Bible concept of moderation. Not doing too much, not doing too little. So, so it is with our speech. Let's start out here in James chapter 3. I'm going to read the whole chapter. It's only 18 verses, and there's a lot in there about your speech. It says here, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word... The same as a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Let me just stop right there. Think about that for a minute. Most people, you would say, where does sin begin? What member of your body would sin begin with? You know? And a lot of people would say, well, you're not, you know, it maybe would start up here with the thought life or maybe the heart or other areas and things like that, you know, whatever. You know, your feet walking into a bar or your hands touching things that they shouldn't touch. Not according to the Bible. According to the Bible, your sin begins right there. At your mouth. What you're speaking. You see, there's a lot of times that you can have a thought come into your mind, and it's not really, you know, something will just pop into your mind, and you go, oh, whoa, get that out of there. The Bible talks about bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So the thoughts in themselves might not be a sin unless you're purposefully digging that stuff up and purposefully thinking and lusting and whatever, then it becomes a sin. But the point is, you can have thoughts enter your mind and you can just get that thought out of there. Bring them into captivity and say, get out. I don't want to think about that. But it becomes a real major sin when it comes from here and comes out through the mouth. Let's continue. If you can get control of here, You'll be able to control your flesh a lot better. Verse 3, Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. If you've never seen that, a horse that's hooked up to a carriage or whatever, or even somebody riding it, they'll put this thing like that in their mouth. It kind of goes through. It's a bit, and it comes through, and then there's a, ro or a piece of a leather going back this way and one going back that way. And you're, you're riding on that little carriage, and you go like this, and you pull over on this side, and the horse, horse is like this. Uh, uh, I got, and he goes, okay, I guess I better turn this way. You pull this side, and he goes, I better turn that way. That's what's going on there, if you don't know. Verse 4, Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. Let me ask you a question. Has your mouth, specifically so your tongue, has it ever gotten you in trouble? And by the way, if your tongue ever is cut out, you can't talk. Your tongue is what controls your speech. So that's what, again, the Bible proves itself to be scientifically true here. But has your mouth ever gotten you in trouble? Something you've said that you shouldn't have said? Sure, right. Just a little muscle in there. Just a little tiny thing right there. And yet it can get the whole body in trouble. Amazing. Verse 7. For every kind of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing, my brethren, these things ought not so to be. You know, uh, I, I know that there are uh, Christians out there that every once in a while they'll let a word 
slip. I've been around some, you know, men, older men and things that are, you know, I, I don't doubt their salvation. They were saved men and they'll be fine and everything and very sanctified and holy until they hit their hand with, hit their thumb with a hammer or something like that. And you'll hear a word slip out. You know, I don't judge a man for something like that. Again, you're talking about lusts of the flesh, sins of the flesh, you know, profanity and things like that. But when there's somebody and they just, there's no, you know, holding back profanity and they just, they swear a lot, you know, and all this stuff. And there's, you know, always backstabbing people and just problem like that. Yeah, it's a problem. Verse 11, doth a fountain send forth at the same place water, sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Now let me just stop there for a minute. Conversation in your King James Bible can either be your behavior, but it can also be your speech. Okay. Um, again, when, six, when this Bible was written back in 1611, the English language was at its peak. Okay, the English language, if you study it, it goes back, you know, a little bit before the time of John Wycliffe there in the 1300s. It was still very young at his, in his time there. And it went up and it peaked at 1611. And since that time, it's starting to go down. And right now, the amount of your vocabulary, the vocabula vocabulary of the average person is way down from what it used to be. And by the way, there have been many articles written and, and a lot of study and research into this. Um, the broader your vocabulary, the higher your IQ. That is a known fact. Okay, you're, you're able to use so many more words to describe things and things like that. Your brain has a greater capacity. It'd be kind of like saying, um, I have a, two different hard drives. Both of them are one terabyte hard drives. And the one has, you know, this whole library here digitized and put on it okay the other one has a bunch of funny jokes and stories and that's it and the first one has got 90 percent of the hard drive filled up the other one's only got 10 percent of the hard drive filled up well, which one is going to give you more knowledge you see same thing with our vocabulary the broader your vocabulary the the higher your iq uh, it will actually make you you know you'll do a lot better in life that's what I'm trying to say. That's why you should not, you know, go with this whole movement of we need to dumb down the scriptures. We need to bring the scriptures down. Uh, no, we need to elevate the scriptures up. Okay. And bring them to the peak of the English language. Right there at King James Bible. But uh, so we see their conversation can mean either behavior or it can actually mean your speech. And I believe in this context it's talking about speech. Because it's talking about the tongue. So there. Verse 14, but if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them, that make peace. Okay? So, now we're going to go back to the book of Proverbs. We're going to start seeing some really interesting verses in the book of Proverbs. Uh, the book of, book of Proverbs is actually my favorite book in the entire Bible. Uh, there's just so much wisdom in this book. It's, it's incredible. I, I just love to, love to go through the book of Proverbs and um, just read it. And just see how many things are, are just so profound in this book. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 7 and 8. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing froward or perverse in them. Can you say that? I have to ask myself that question. You see, the Bible also teaches, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What are you putting in your heart? What are you seeing with your eyes? You know, as a researcher, there are times I have to watch videos of wicked things and whatever else. You know, and I'm not talking pornography or anything like that. That's, no. 
what I'm talking about is I have to see news things and stuff like that. And a lot of times, you know, people are getting more and more that they just use the F word and other words like that. They just, it does it's not even, it doesn't even make sense sometimes. They're just using it all the time. It's incredible. And, you know, even as somebody who studies the Bible just all the time and is constantly dealing with people and people asking questions. And I mean, my wife and I, it's just like all we ever do. Talk about the Bible, just scripture, scripture, scripture. We listen to preaching. We listen to hymns. We listen to whatever, whatever. I'll tell you what, just just watching little bits of videos and things like that where I hear profanity, it starts to get into my mind. And there have been a couple times I've been working on something and I bang my knuckles or I do some kind of thing and it's like the word almost comes out my mouth. It's bad. And you see it says there, my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Again, it goes back to the thing of controlling your thought life, making sure that what's up here doesn't come out there if it's something that's not pleasing to the Lord. If it's something that's not pleasing to the Lord, you get rid of it up there. I mean, we are in we are at battle here, brethren. I mean, there's there is no nice little no man's land, little peaceful R and R that you can go and you can get away from the battlefield. Uh, uh this world's a battlefield for you, Christian. Wherever you go, you're going to struggle. You're going to be fighting all the time, and you can't say, "Well, I read that book last week, and I read a lot of it, so you know what? I got some other things to do this week." I'm not going to read the Bible. I'm just going to put it down. I got I got so much other stuff to do. You can't do that. Be about you know the same thing as going out into battle and saying you know, I think I'm going to leave my gun and my ammunition back at base this time when we go out on patrol. You know if there's an ambush, eh, I'll get through it somehow. Of course not. I'm not going to do that. Why would you put this book down? Very important to remember that. Go to Proverbs 10. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 11. It says here, The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirreth up strife, but strifes, but love covereth all sins. In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found. Hmm. But a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. The labor of the righteous tendeth to life, the fruit of the wicked to sin. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuseth reproof erreth. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, oh boy, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Kind of funny because the Bible, who does the Bible identify as fools? Atheists. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Think about it. Hideth hatred with lying lips. You see these atheists and things? Well, I think that we all just, you know, should just learn to be better people and we don't need to believe in a God for that. You know, we can, we can, mankind can bring about a good, good things here on earth. We don't need to believe in a supreme being. What are they doing? They're, hi they're hiding hatred. They hate God. They don't want to believe in God, not because they've, not seeing proof or something, they hate God, you know. And he, did, he that uttereth a slander, like these atheists, they'll lie about God all the time. And it's funny because it ties right in, they're fools. Interesting. Verse 19, In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, this is a key scripture here, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. What did we read back in James chapter 3? The tongue is a little member, and it's set on fire of hell. It's a world of iniquity. Okay. Well, if your tongue is what causes you to sin, then maybe speaking a lot would increase the probability of you sinning. Yeah. And we're going to see that throughout this study. The Bible has a lot to say about this thing of shut your mouth. But let's continue here. We're going to read down to verse 23. It says here, The tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many. But fools die for want of wisdom. The blessing of the Lord it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. It, has, it is as sport to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. 
And you're going to see in this study that wisdom, a man who has understanding and wisdom, you calculate your words, you measure your words. You get in a group of people, you just stand there and you just kind of be quiet and somebody says, what do you think about it? And you're there going, well, I've been thinking about what to say. And you measure your words and you say what God wants you to say. And the best way for you to answer people in a crowd is with Scripture. The Word of God. Now let's jump down to verse 31 there in chapter 10. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the froward tongue shall be cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh frowardness. Again, you know, a difference there. You're seeing the difference between saved and lost. Okay, look at chapter 11. Go down to verse 13. A talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. Again, can you keep secrets? If somebody comes to you and they tell you something personal, what do you do with that uh, juicy gossip? Can you keep it a secret? You should. Okay. He that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. That's very important. Don't be a talebearer. Let's go over to Proverbs chapter 12, verse 13. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 13. We're going to read, like I said, we're going to read a bunch of verses in this study today because there's so much in the book of Proverbs and uh, throughout the Bible, actually, on this subject. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 13 through 23. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsels, or counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame. He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness. What's the Bible say about truth? If you know the ministry here, you ought to be able to know it by heart by now. John chapter 17, verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. He that speaketh Truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. Kind of like Jehovah's Witnesses, you know. <laughs> they're not witnessing for Jehovah. All right, they're witnessing for the God of this world, who is Lucifer. Verse 18, there is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Boy, get a hold of that one. That's another thing that's very important. You look out there and you see all these lies that are out there today and everything. Who's going to care in 100 years? You know, the Bible talks about when Jesus Christ comes down to the earth and sets up his millennial kingdom, the names of the idols are going to be cut off. So right now you get these Roman Catholics and they're saying, we believe in Saint, you know, such and so and Mary and all this other stuff and whatever else and you get some Muslim, and they're over there saying Muhammad, you know, is the prophet of Allah and all this other stuff. And I believe that we'll, I believe we'll be in the millennial kingdom. If you're saved in the body of Christ, you're going to be ruling and reigning with Christ if you suffered with him. We're going to be in that millennial kingdom in a hundred years from now. Nobody's even going to care about Muhammad or Mary or, well, Mary will be there. She's just going to be another saint. But, you know, like any other Christian that's saved, but, you know, all those idols, who's even going to care? You say, what are you saying there? Well, it says there, the lip of truth shall be established forever. Jesus Christ is the truth. The Word of God is the truth. So you speak about this book, you speak about the Lord Jesus Christ, it's established forever. But a lying tongue is but for a moment. Yep. You say, but uh, Islam's been around for a long time, so is Roman Catholicism. But in the light of eternity, it's but a moment. Nobody's even going to care in a hundred years. Interesting. Verse 20, Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord. 
but they that deal truly are his delight. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. Now, there again, another th interesting thing. You say, well then, every time I know the truth and every time that there's uh, some time when I could speak truth and I should just be real quick to just blah, 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 just blab things and stuff like this and just just I should always be the guy that talks up and is always proclaiming truth and preaching truth to everybody whether they want it or not. You gotta weigh that stuff out, brethren. Right there it says, a prudent man concealeth knowledge. It doesn't say concealeth his own thoughts or concealeth, concealeth vain thoughts or, or whatever. He concealeth knowledge. Are there times and places when you should just keep your mouth shut? Yeah. Especially if the Bible talks about a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject over in the book of Titus, chapter 3. You know? It doesn't say a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition keep trying. No, it says first, second admonition, one, two, you know, third strike, he's done. Reject him after the first and second time. When they come back, hey, what about this? What about that? Sorry, I don't have time. Interesting. I'll go to chapter 13 in Proverbs, verse 3. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. But he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. I'll tell you what, I remember doing this study years ago, and I was shocked at how many times the Bible actually says, keep your mouth shut. And you know, there again, these, these easy believism heretics out there, the Jack Hileses and, and all of his little following and stuff like that, it's all this win souls, win souls, win souls, win souls, win souls, win souls. You have to have thousands of people saved every year or you're a failure. Uh, hold on a second there. Coming to people with a sales pitch and selling them something that they don't even understand or that they don't really even believe in, they don't even know what they're doing, that's not winning souls. Okay? That's getting people you know, to come into a Babel building someplace so you can get their money. And a lot of those people end up being atheists later on in their life. You actually did them a disservice by your easy believism, quick prayerism thing. You know? There are times and places, brethren, when you will get around people and the Lord just doesn't open a door. And I don't understand those times. I mean, I've, I've seen that. You know? I remember back when we had our little house church down Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, Bible Believers Fellowship, and uh, when I actually originally did this sermon... And there were times we were going to go tract such and such place, you know, and, and there was this huge, big, wicked Babel building, uh, Lancaster, no, what was it, uh, LCBC, Lancaster County Bible Church or something like that, you know, and uh, big, huge, whip, wicked, just devil center and rock and roll and the whole works and everything. You know, you're 100 yards away from the Babel building and you can feel the, the, the beat of the drums with the doors closed, the windows shut and everything. Insane. But... Uh, Anyhow, we wanted to go track the parking lot, put gospel tracks on the vehicles and stuff like this. And it's just like we prayed about it and we thought, hey, this would be a good idea. We went out there. If one time it was like freezing rain, we get there, the place is like, you know, they closed the services early. Another time we got there and they had like changed the service time because of some other thing or something like this. Finally got there. We weren't there five minutes and security came out and kicked us out. So it's just like, and there have been so many times that we've tried to witness to people and it's just like, it just, there's like a block there. You can just feel that there's like a, the door isn't open. And on the same token, there have been times when, you know, I'm not even ready to witness to, to people. I'm not even like, you know, you should always be ready. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I'm not, it's not even in my mind. I'm not specifically going out, hey, let's go out, do some tracting, do some soul winning type of stuff. I'm just out doing errands. And all of a sudden, you know, I remember the one time I'm like sitting at the bank, you know, getting my papers ready and everything else. And, and I'm sitting there and I see out of peripheral vision, I see some guy walking towards me. And I'm like, okay. So I look up at the guy and he, he's getting towards my truck and he goes, I appreciate your bumper stickers there. He said, that's absolutely right. You know, because I have on the side of my truck, I have about, there's only one Holy Bible. And gotten into a big thing with him and talking and stuff like that, witnessing and all that, you know. I wasn't even ready for it. So the Lord will open doors. And sometimes they're closed. 
You read about that in the book of Acts. There was a time when it, it was actually closed. So don't think, don't feel this ultimate pressure on you that you just have to witness to every single person you run into. Now you ought to witness to some people, you see. You ought to, you know, don't totally not witness to people, but don't feel this ultra high pressure thing that you just got to be talking all the time to people and stuff like that. You're seeing it here in the Bible. There are times when you shouldn't talk. There are times when you should. See? And you got it, and you say, well, Brian, how am I going to know which time is which? Very simple. Study the Word of God. Read the Word of God. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the more of this gets down into the heart, the more ready you're going to be to witness at any time. So you can go on about your regular life, and the Lord will actually put you into situations and, and open up scenarios, and you'll find yourself in this thing going, I can't believe I just ran into this person. What are the odds of this happening? God will open up the doors. And, you know, there are times, yes, you should go out and witness. You should go out and, and put gospel tracts out or hand them to people or, or whatever. That's fine. Again, I'm not trying to discourage that by what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, as Christians, our words should be very measured and think before you speak. We shouldn't just be big blabbermouth and just blah, 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 blah. Think before you open your mouth. Let's continue here. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 25. A true witness delivereth souls, but a deceitful witness speaketh lies. What are we just talking about here? A true witness is somebody that comes up to somebody and says, you know, you get into a conversation and stuff like this and say, let me ask you a question. If you were to die today, do you know for sure where you would go? That's a good, true way to say it. A false way to say it would be, can I ask you a question? Would you like to go to heaven when you die? Would you be willing to pray this prayer that will ensure that you go to heaven? Well, why aren't you telling them about sin? There's a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. They can't be saved unless they're a sinner. Unless they have a knowledge and say, oh yeah, yeah, man, I have transgressed God's laws. I don't deserve heaven. I deserve to go to hell. God be merciful to me, a sinner. See? A deceitful witness will speak lies. Why? To get in the numbers. If you've seen my studies on uh, Russell Anderson and Jack Hiles and that whole cult system out there, the um, First Baptist Church of Hammond, Indiana, and the Hiles-Anderson cult and all that stuff, a lot of those people... It's all about numbers. They're faking numbers. And Russell Anderson is paying men in other countries to go out and win souls. And they talk about, we've had millions, tens of millions of people saved. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. Where's the fruit? Fruit's not there. Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs 15, verses 1 and 2. A soft answer turneth away wrath. But grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. That first one's a little hard sometimes, especially nowadays. You know, you run into so many wicked movements and things like that. But, you know, you know, a lot of times I think people think I'm very rude and obnoxious and arrogant and whatever with my preaching. Um, that's because I'm, I'm focused in on certain movements and certain people. I don't judge people people until I see that there's a clear evil intent there, that they know what they're talking about, they've seen the other side, and they're just going on deceiving people. I will get very brutal, I will get very nasty with them, just as the Lord Jesus did, just as Paul did, okay? That's what I'm supposed to do. I rebuke things that are very wicked, and I know that they're wicked, they're not innocent, okay? But in my personal dealings with people, I'm very, I'm actually a very nice guy, okay? I'm not at all crude or rude or arrogant or whatever. I'm, I'm blunt with my dealings with people, but I try to be very, very kind to people, you know, and I've, I've had people, you know, cuss me out and things like this, and I've been around some really, really foul individuals, and I try to give them very soft answers, because if I start, you know, the old pride starts to kick in, and I start saying, well, you know, here's some grievous words for you. All I'm going to do is make them mad, you know, 
that's what it's talking about there in verse 1. But verse 2 there, the tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. You know, most of the entertainment and the things that, of this world are foolishness. Is that what you fill up your time with, talking about, with people? Or do you talk about serious subjects? Again, another challenge from the Bible here. But jump down to verse 4, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Another very good verse. Jump down to verse 7. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doeth not so. Okay, again, right here, the book of wisdom. This is the greatest book of truth on the earth. How much of it, you know, enters your speech when you talk with people. Now jump down to Proverbs 15, verse 28. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. You know one of the marks of a true Holy Spirit in, in dwelling in somebody's life? Spirit of truth. You know, I, I can always tell when I meet somebody who's saved, truly saved, and somebody who's lost by one test. What is their attitude towards truth? I meet these Christians, you know, Christians, and I say, boy, you know, I just, I can't stand these new versions. Well, you know, honestly to me, it's, it's more of a personal preference thing. And I go, okay, um, boy, you know, this, this modern, uh, Christian music is just so wicked. It's just like the world. I mean, you're just giving people the world. Well, you know, I, again, I don't really have a big problem. I personally don't listen to Christian heavy metal or rock, but if somebody wants to, that's kind of their thing. And I say, you know, well, uh, what about this? And what about that? And boy, the Catholic, you know, did you see this stinking Pope? Man, the guy is so wicked. He's vile. Well, I don't think we should judge. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know what you're dealing with? False convert. When I meet some Christian, I say, uh, you know, uh, oh, you're saved? Yes, I am. What Bible do you use? There's only one Bible, the King James. I go, hmm, okay. Um, so uh, what type of listen, music do you listen to? Well, brother, I, you know, honestly, I used to listen to a lot of really wicked stuff, but I listen to the old hymns. That's what I listen to. Old hymns are, you know, other conservative types of music. Oh, wow. And I say, hey, what do you think about Catholicism? Pfft, Catholicism, wicked, just wicked disgusting system that it is. I mean, it just, and on and on and on, you know. And again, it's not that you have to agree with me on every point. It's just that there are main doctrines, major things that Bible believers will line up on. Bible believer, any Bible believer is going to be against Catholicism. No Bible believing Christian is going to come out and say, I'm a King James Bible believer and I think Catholicism is wonderful. No, you can't. You know, I'm a Bible-believing Christian, and, and I have friends that are Muslims, and we get along fine. Huh? I'm a Bible-believing Christian, and I just, I love Hollywood movies, and I watch every movie that comes out. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm afraid it doesn't work that way. And you say, well, Brian, what does that have to do with the verse there? The heart of the righteous studieth to answer. You know, the, one of the main motivations in your life after you really get saved is studying to answer the lost. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Know what I mean? But let's continue on here. I'm doing a bit much talking. <laughs> not as much reading of Scripture. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 23 and 24. The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. Pleasant words are as in honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. You know, one of the jobs, your jobs as a Christian is exhortation. Exhorting the brethren. Encouraging the brethren. And you get somebody and they do something nice, you say, hey, you know what? I really appreciate what you're doing for the Lord. That's good to hear. That makes you feel good. You know, the thing that has always kept me going down through the years is the prayers of God's people, but also people just 
send a little note. You don't have to, you know, write some, you know, 50 page thing telling me how much, you know, you're, you've been blessed by the ministry here and I'm just God's right hand man or something like this. You don't need to do that. Just a little note, you know, from time to time, I'll get these letters in the mail, you know, praise God, brother. And I, I'm really been blessed by your ministry and keep going. Three, four lines and, and that's it. You know what that is? Pleasant words are as in honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. That keeps me going. Thank you to everybody out there that's done that. Go next to Proverbs chapter 17, verse 4. A wicked doer giveth heed to false lips, and a liar giveth ear to a naughty tongue. Hmm. False lips and a naughty tongue, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know... Again, you know, I, I see a lot of Christians and they'll say about, you know, I just, I love to watch the news every day. I, I'm, my life revolves around the, the news and everything. When I say, well, they're lying to you, you know that, don't you? The mainstream media is, is just, they're a bunch of liars. They're propagandizers for the coming new world order. Yeah, but, you know, I still like to just tune in to see what's going on. What's going on is they're lying to you, you know? I mean, why in the world? You know, a wicked doer giveth heed to false lips. If you know they're lying to you, why do you keep listening to them? The Bible calls you a wicked doer. You're giving heed to false lips. Kind of a strange thing, brethren. Jump down to verse 7. Excellent speech becometh not a fool, much less do lying lips a prince. Those that are in authority, you know, a political ruler, here would be a prince, um, they should be well-spoken. They shouldn't talk like fools. And it's interesting there, it talks about excellent speech becometh not a fool. You see somebody who's very foolish, and they stand up and they start talking about a very serious subject, and most of the time they just fool around and mess around. Most people are just waiting for the punchline to come in, you know. That's why it's important to be somewhat serious. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 28, or I'm sorry, verse 27. Go down there. Proverbs 17, 27. He that hath knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Even a fool. Now look at this. This one's a very interesting verse. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. Have you ever seen that? You get this group of people and they're all standing around it. Blah, 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 blah. And you see some guy and he's just standing there. You know what most people think? They look at the quiet guy and they think, he's smarter than all these other people. Why? The lips of a fool pour out foolishness. But the guy might be totally ignorant. He might just be totally dumb, but just standing there. Keep your mouth shut, you know. It's actually counted wise. He'll look wiser that way. You know, I mean, it's just like you can be a fool and keep your mouth shut and it's a mystery. Or you can open your mouth as a fool and then the mystery's gone. And people know that you're a fool then. Again, some pretty sound advice from the Word of God here. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 6 through 8. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. <laughs> I like that verse. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Okay? Interesting, because if you have the NIV, it talks about the words of the talebearer there. It says there is choice morsels. Not wounds, they're choice morsels. They're really good, you know. But you see there again, a fool's lips enter into contention, arguing about things, and his mouth calleth for strokes. You know, you just feel like just, you know, just, oh, I just want to pound the guy, <laughs> you know. Why? Started right there. That little muscle. Right there. Just that little tiny piece of flesh. Right there. Started many a fight. Started many a battle. Killed many a people. You see? You say, what about, uh, the, what do you mean killed many people? Well, um, how many of the people in the death camps did Adolf Hitler kill with his hands? None. Probably. 
I mean, I don't really know. There, you know, he might have killed somebody with his hands, whatever. But uh, most of the people that were killed in Nazi Germany were killed with Hitler's tongue. Getting up there and speaking, getting the people all riled up. Hmm. How many other political leaders down through the centuries have killed people with their mouth? The Bible's not exaggerating when it says that the tongue is a little member, but it's a world of iniquity. Interesting. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13. Another key scripture here for you to always remember. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. One of the quickest ways to prove that you're a fool is to just, bleh, oh yeah, yeah, I've heard about that. Eh, you know, And you'll get that too when you're witnessing to people. You know, you'll get somebody and you say, you know, um, you know, would you, you know, do you know if you're going to heaven or when you die or whatever? And they say, yeah, yeah, you know what? Yeah, you know, I've done the whole Christian thing. You know, hey, I don't even want to hear about it. Okay, you know, and you say, but can I show you what the Bible says? No, I don't even want to know. Okay, you have your rights and I appreciate the fact that you have your beliefs and you're strong in your beliefs, but I don't really care. You know what you're dealing with? The Bible says you're dealing with a fool. And you certainly are once you meet somebody like that. Look at verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Mm -hmm. You can do a lot of damage with that tongue. But guess what? The Lord will recompense that. The Lord will take vengeance on you. You mess around and you get people killed and whatever else. Like this whole thing, you know, Stephen Anderson and his lies videos. His tongue, I mean, is Stephen Anderson ever going to physically attack a Jew? Probably not. But his vicious videos attacking the Jewish people are going to be used in the future to persecute the Jews. You know, he's, he's dredging up this garbage that Martin Luther wrote centuries ago on the Jews and their lies. He's digging it up so he can turn people against... The, the Jewish people. You see? His mouth is going to cause people to get killed. That's why I'm against him. And that's why I've been exposing him. Go next to Proverbs chapter 19, verse 1. Better is the pool better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Yeah. Very true. Jump down to verse 5. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. Interesting, because in the New Testament, Jesus Christ said, Ye are of your father the devil. He was a liar from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. Yeah. So you have here, He that speaketh lies shall not escape. Again, you're going to be lied about, you're going to be slandered, you're going to be all this stuff, you're going to be attacked as a Christian. But those people that lie about you, that falsely accuse you for the name of Jesus Christ, that call you narrow-minded, bigoted, whatever, Bible thumper, all the little cute little names that they come up with, all those people are going to one day stand before the Lord, more than likely at the great white throne judgment, you know, for the lost. They're not going to escape. Let them mock you and make fun of you now in this life. They're not going to be mocking you in eternity. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. See, so why do you have to throw that one in there? Well, what is the congregation of the dead? The words that I speak to you, they are spirit, they are life. Living words. Dead words. I have a bunch of them over there. I can't, I'm not going to go pick one up right now. But the new versions are dead. You wander out of the way of understanding, you'll remain in the congregation of the dead. The NIV, New American Standard, English Standard Version, whatever. That's dead preaching over there. This is living preaching. And again, it comes through the mouth. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 9. Proverbs 23, verse 9. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. You get some contentious atheistic fool or something. And by the way, there's different types of atheists. 
there are professing atheists and then there are practicing atheists. So, huh? People that actually claim to be atheists most of the time are just professing. But you'll actually get people who call themselves Christians and yet they live totally without reference to God. In practice, they deny God's existence. They do things that if they really truly believed in God, they wouldn't be doing them. Okay? And you meet these people and you try to talk to them and they answer a matter before they hear it. You know what the Bible says? It's folly and shame unto him. And right there is your follow-up verse. The verse we just read there, Proverbs 23, 9. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. In other words, don't waste your time. Again, when you're witnessing, are you a sinner? Well, I don't really think I'm that bad of a person. Well, can I show you from the Bible that you are? No, you know, I don't want to hear that. Oh, but see, you really need to... No. Well, friend, the Bible says that God is going to judge you for your works someday. Okay? And if you reject Jesus Christ, the only way you can ever work your way into heaven, okay, and the only way that you can get out of hell, eternity in hell, is by faith in Jesus Christ. You need to come to God as a sinner. You need to be honest enough to admit that you're a sinner. If you're not willing to admit that, there's nothing I can do for you. See? Walk away. Speak not in the ears of that fool. Next go down to verse 15. My son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice, even mine. Yea, my reins shall rejoice when thy lips speak right things. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. Again, if you fear God, you're going to speak right things. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not coming down on any of you out there and saying, if you've never, you know, if you've kept your mouth shut sometimes when you should have spoken for, up for the Lord and whatever, then you're a failure. Because, you know, I've done it. It's difficult sometimes. It's hard sometimes, to, you know, to keep our fear in the right place. And there have been times I've feared man more than I feared God. I speak that to my shame. You know, I'm not trying to brag or anything. It's, it's an embarrassing thing. And you say, well, how do you get better at it? Well, by studying the Bible more and getting rid of more of the world and putting more of Scripture into myself so that when it's time for me to speak, there's not much of the world in, my, in my head anymore. It's just going to be the Word of God that comes out of my mouth. You know, that's the main thing there. And our hearts are not supposed to envy sinners. We're not supposed to, and again, that's part of the thing of fearing man. You look and you say, well, I'm worried about losing my job, or I'm worried about this, or I'm worried about that, you know, and I've you know, got to do whatever. God can provide for you, you know. Be ready and willing to stand up for Him and speak for Him. Next, we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 25. Verse 11 and 12, here we have the thing of, of exhortation again among the saved brethren. It says, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. As an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. Again, as Christians, we need to be open to each other's rebu rebukes and reproofs and things like that. And part of exhortation is actually that. You see it there, a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. You see a brother or sister that's messed up in something, and you come to them and you use a soft answer. You come to them and say, hey, you know, I, I just want to talk to you about something here. Whatever, whatever. And I've been repro reproved and rebuked by some of the brethren, and there have been many times that I have changed. And I publicly apologized or whatever. I've talked about that. You know, and there are sometimes I don't believe that I've that they've proved their case that I'm wrong from Scripture, and so I don't change. It's just as simple as that. I have to stay by the Word of God. If I changed my beliefs every time somebody rebuked me, well, I'd be changing every day. You know, it, so it doesn't work that way. You know, I I my standard is the Word of God here. So you know, but the the point is, as Christians, you can speak encouraging words, but you can also sometimes, hey, lovingly re rebuke or correct somebody, you know, and we all need to be open to that. We all need to be open to correction. Go next to verse 14. 
Proverbs 25, verse 14 and 15. Whoso boasteth himself of a false gift is like clouds and wind without rain. By long forbearing is a prince persuaded, and a soft tongue breaketh the bone. Okay, a so soft tongue breaketh the bone. What are you talking about? Being kind and loving. Sometimes that's the best thing that you can do. I remember I had a, a situation years and years ago when I was first on YouTube, and somebody just like, really rebuked me hard. I mean, just really, you wicked devil, you blank, 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 you know. They weren't using profanity, but they were just like, you're just wicked and you're whatever. And I, I was mad and I was like typing out this super nasty, insulting email, you know, back to them. <laughs> and, and it was just like the Lord just said, no, Brian, no, 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 no. And so I stopped and I went back and I was like, okay. I wrote a very nice email, and I, I apologize that you were offended by that, and you know, because what I had said, you know, they uh, didn't understand what I was trying to mean by it. And they wrote back this email, and they were like, "Oh, don't worry about it. you. Know, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have been so so mean with you and everything." And you know, they became a friend of the ministry. So there's some times that you need to do that. But let's go to the next one here. Like I said, we got a bunch of them here, and I'm rambling here a little bit, but uh, Proverbs chapter 26, Proverbs 26, verses 3 through 5, 